Welcome to another video. The idea of this problem is that you are given three real numbers, any three real numbers. If you add up the sums, uh, the squares of those numbers, you should get at least the sum of the pairwise product. So if the numbers are a, b, and c, and you square a, you square b, you square c, the answer you get when you add up all the answers has to be greater than or equal to what you would get if you were not actually squaring, but you picked two numbers and multiplied them, another two combination, another combination of two, and that's what we have here. This will always be greater than or equal to this. Just looking at it or thinking about it, you go, that makes sense, but you need to be able to prove it. The problem with proving it is if you don't go about it the right way, it might take you a long time to arrive at this very simple proof. Let's get into the video. Because A and B are real numbers, it is easy for me to do some manipulation and I can see that this is of the quadratic form. You can see that this is a squared, this is b squared. Once you see stuff like this, you want to rest your mind on two ideas. The idea of a plus b squared and a minus b squared. So the natural gravitation you would have is to do this. Well, I tried it, but it was not taking me to my answer. But this one took me to my answer because I was able to reach a conclusion faster. Uh, this one, I got stuck. So this is the only problem that you might run into, knowing whether to do this or this. Oh, I even tried this. A plus B plus C all squared. This even got crazier because of the extra term that came in the middle of it. So let's see this. Since A, B, C are real, okay, we know that A minus B squared is greater than or equal to zero. That one is obvious, right? So I'm just going to write a combination of all three. So we have um, A minus C squared is greater than or equal to zero and B minus C squared is greater than or equal to zero. So we know because they're real numbers, the square of any real number is positive, okay? It's important for you to note that because if these are not real numbers, we can't make this claim because if you have an imaginary number, the square of an imaginary number may be negative or neither negative nor positive, depending on what kind of expression you get in the middle. So with that, this implies, what do we have here? A, what is A minus B? So we know all of these are positive, okay? So this is what we have. Um, you know what? That is, so we can, if we add up all of these, we have a minus b squared plus a minus c squared plus b minus c squared is greater than or equal to zero. So the sum of all of these squares are greater than or equal to zero, right? Mm-hmm. So what I'm going to do is just expand all of these and I'm going to have a squared um, plus b squared minus 2ab plus a squared plus c squared minus 2ac and plus b squared plus c squared minus 2bc. And we know this is going to be greater than or equal to zero. You can almost see that we're, all, we're, we're there already. Because if I collect these two, I'm going to have 2a squared plus 2b squared plus 2c squared. You see that? 2a squared, 2b squared, and 2c squared. And all I have is going to be minus 2ab minus 2bc minus 2ac.
everybody has a 2, so I can divide everything by 2 since it's a scalar, and I have a squared plus b squared plus c squared minus ab minus bc minus ac is greater than or equal to 0. If I move this over here, I get this and we're done. So we have a squared plus b squared plus c squared is greater than or equal to ab minus plus bc plus ac or ca, however you want to write it. Now, this looks so easy, it was because I made the right choice of a minus b squared. Now, if you have another way to reach this answer quickly, leave it in the comment section. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.